In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a very basic crate for a game. Um, so this is going to be a wooden crate, something that you might have seen in a lot of different games. So it's just going to be a square uh, cube that um, has diagonal uh, beams across it. So once we get to the final product, you'll understand what I mean. But the first thing that we need to do is put in a cube. So at the very top left in the polygon modeling tab, you can see all of these orange shapes. So what we need to do, click the cube one and it'll spawn in this cube. What we need to do as well, we need to scale this up. So I know that Maya by default uses centimeters. So if we scale this up on the left, so if we go to the channel box, we can scale this box. So we can do it through uh, the scale or we can do it through the width, height and depth. So if we do it width, height and, height and depth, it uh, it'll allow us to also have the scale to one, so if we need to change it, we can easily. So I'm going to do all the width, height, and depth, so I'm going to put it as 100, let's say. So I'll scale that all the way up, so it's going to be quite a lot larger than the grid, but we want this because um, this crate's going to be about half human height, so about to waist height, which is around 100 centimeters, give or take. So it might be a bit smaller, might be a bit bigger, but if we do 100, that's something that we can work with easily. What we then need to do, we need to take this and get their faces and um, do some extrusion work. So this model will only be using the extrude uh, modifier. So on the right, we can see channel box, attribute editor and modeling toolkit. So we want to go into modeling toolkit and here we can see the different selection modes. So we've got object select, which allows us to select the whole thing. We've got vertex selection, which allows us to select each individual corner. So we can start to move that around. We've got edge selection, which allows us to select the edges. But we want to do face. So we want to drag select all of the faces. So we can look around, hold Alt and do left click to look around. And we can see that all of these are glowing up orange. That means they're all selected. If you, for instance, have highlight back faces unselected and you try drag, the back ones won't be selected. So make sure you've got highlights uh, back faces selected. Select them all, make sure they're all orange. And then we can just click extrude. So on here, you can see components and you can see this extrude. So you can, it hints at what it does by showing the orange one and it extrudes it up. But what we want to do, we want to do an offset first. So currently all these are black. So this will mean that if we do an offset, it won't actually do anything because it's grouped all of these faces together. But what we need to do, if we tick keep faces together off, we can then see, if I put that offset back to zero, it's no longer dark, it turns into what uh, how the selection looked before. So if I put the offset, you can see it starts to put an offset in, which you'd probably see on a uh, wooden crate like this. So you'd see uh, it gets pushed in, and then what we need to do, we need to extrude it inwards. So if we click extrude again, so we're going to change the thickness, but if we do it on this one, it'll just do that and it won't be what we want. So we need to click extrude again and it resets everything to default. So all we need to do now is do the thickness and it does it all together. So I'm going to do this minus 10. That looks okay to me. So we need to make sure that everything's still looking gray. So if I take this and uh, move it this way, if we start to see anything that's black like this, this will mean when we put it into engine, there'll be issues. So make sure that you don't see any black faces. We need to be seeing grey faces by default, unless you've put your own texture on. But if we see any black, that means that it's in an inverse normal. So what that'll mean, when we put it into engine, it will be invisible. We'll be able to see through it. So make sure everything's looking grey so far. So this is looking fine to me. Something I also like to do is I like to put on... Where's the wireframe mode? This one. So wireframe on shaded, so I can see all the edges are looking fine. So I like to have that on, it's up to you. So I like to have this on to be able to preview what my uh, topology of the mesh is currently looking like. So once we've got this, we've got the base of the crate done. Now what we need to do is we need to have diagonal beams that are keeping this crate sturdy. So what we need to do here, put another box in. So if we spawn another box and move it out, we can see there's this very tiny box. 
So I'm going to change the width to 20. No, that's too big. 10. 10. 10. And then we need to find out which one is this one. So this one, I'm going to set that to 80 for now and just see how that goes. What we need to do, we need to push this in. So currently you can see that when we have it all out, all of these edges you can see as highlighted green. Once we start to intersect it with another mesh, you can see it's turned invisible because it's intersecting. So what we need to do, we need to make sure none of this back one is in, is uh, you can see the edge. We need to have this intersecting with the inner bit. So you can see there, we need to push it in. Okay, so when we have it, it's not any floating geometry that the player can see. So I'll push that all the way in and then make sure that it's not overlapping here, which it's not. So this is fine. So then what we need to do, we need to rotate this. So if you hold J before you start, so don't like left click, hold J first, then left click to rotate, it does snapping. So if not, you'll have to manually rotate. Or on the rotate on the right, you can set that to 45. But holding J is an easy way to do that. So once we've got this, we can then scale it up a little bit so that it's um, intersecting the corners as well, because we don't want them floating because that will mean it's not sturdy. So once we've got that, we've got one of these beams done. But what we need to do to optimize the mesh, move this out of the way, and we want to delete some of the faces that can't be seen. So if we undo this, we know that if we go to face selection, so you can hold right click to bring that menu up, or you can go to the modeling toolkit and do the selection here. So we know that these can be seen. So if you select the ones that can be seen, and then you could do Control i No. Right, so we'll do it this way. So if we select, go to the face selection, so we know that those are the ones that we can see. So if we select the ones that we can't see and just delete those, this will now be optimized for uh, when we go to do some additional steps. So make sure to set this back, this cube back to the 0, 0, 0 spot. Uh, if not, when we export it, the pivot will be off. So what we need to do here is we need to get the, the diagonal on each of these sides. So there is an option where you could rotate and place it and it might look okay, but a quick and easy way to do it. So it's exactly how we want it. If we go to the, um, we go to the attribute editor on the right, so select the uh, diagonal beam, go to the attribute editor, and we need to find this P cube 2. So what, the, an easy way to find out which one we need to be selecting of these top tabs here, look on the left and look at what's called the outliner. So this one's selected, so it's selected on the outliner, and it's called P cube 2. So there's all these P cube shape 2, delete component, poly cube 2, but we need to find P cube 2, so the exact same name as the outliner. Then drop down pivots here, and we can see this world rotate pivot. So what we need to do, set that to 0, 0, 0, because we know that this crate is at 0, 0, 0. So what happens here, you can see that this rotation is now in the middle of the box rather than the middle of this beam. But currently, if we go to rotate that, it'll just uh, rotate around the rotation that we did to get it looking like that. So we need to change this from object to world in the modeling toolkit here. So what this does, it changes it to world rotation. So as you can see, the rotation is currently rotated to where the object's rotated, whereas if we go to world, it goes to how the world is. So just normal rotation. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold J, then I'm going to hold shift. You can see the clone icon then shows up. This is an easy way to clone the mesh. Oh, that didn't clone it. So what we're going to do, we're going to just do this and then manually set the rotation. So I'll go to rotate and then we'll go to 90, 90. And there we have it. So we have this duplicated. So we can also do control D. So this duplicates it. So rather than having to uh, duplicate and clone and then manually put in the rotation, we can control D and then hold J and then we can snap rotate to the point. So control D, J, then rotate, control D, and then we're gonna rotate upwards now. 
and then control D and rotate downwards. So now we've got all of these slotted in the right place and then we can see that this crate is looking nice. So I'm going to preview it with shading on. So this is looking nice to me.